Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos, I'm a cinematographer and I'm uh, also secretly in love with the anamorphic look. So in this video I'll take you through different ways that you can achieve that look on various budgets, all the way from $1 to over $100,000. So first let's start with a little background. What is anamorphic? It usually refers to shooting basically a wider aspect ratio uh, video or film, but on a, on a much narrower image sensor. So anamorphic is actually uh, pretty old. It was first used pre-World War I, but it wasn't really used in cinema until 1950s when uh, television became uh, so popular that filmmakers were looking to bring the audience back to the, uh, the cinema uh, by offering widescreen sort of more epic looking films. Now this was achieved by using lenses that can capture a wider aspect ratio by squeezing the image horizontally onto a narrow film strip. Uh, over time the anamorphic look became associated with many of the big epic films that used that, uh, this technique. Uh, it doesn't mean it's the best way to capture video. In fact, anamorphic lenses have many artifacts and, and imperfections that give it that sort of anamorphic or film look. Uh, aside from the obvious uh, wider aspect ratio, the most common to the anamorphic look are the horizontal lens flares. Uh, also, the vertically stretched bokeh. Uh, and the distortion that happens, especially with the wider focal lengths that give the anamorphic footage an almost 3D feeling. Uh, remember that when shooting anamorphic, your image will look squeezed horizontally. So in order to view it properly, you will need to de-squeeze the image. This is actually very easy to do today in any editing program. Uh, back in the day, it was done by projecting the films through an anamorphic lens. So if you like this look and you want to achieve it in your next video of, uh, or film project, then uh, here's the cheapest do-it-yourself solution. It can cost you just one dollar or maybe even for free if you find a black piece of paper and a bit of dental floss. Cut an oval shape on the paper and attach vertically the dental floss. Uh, this filter will create those horizontal flares and it's also going to give you that oval or vertically kind of seemingly stretched bokeh. Uh, next is the Cinemore filter from VidAtlantic. And this works pretty much the same as the do-it-yourself filter, but it's built to last. So it will cost you $69. After that, we're getting into lens adapters. Uh, these use a regular spherical lens that attaches to your camera, and then to that taking lens, you will attach the actual anamorphic adapter uh, or glass with various anamorphic optics. There are many such lens adapters, but most are not usable for an actual film shoot as they require dual focusing of the taking lens and then also the adapted lens. Uh, one that I will mention is an adapter uh, I used from SLR Magic. Uh, they have a 2 times squeeze ratio and a 1.33 squeeze. Uh, these can be bought uh, with a front attachment that is called the range finder and this will uh, allow you to set your taking lens and the adapter uh, focus to infinity and then you can just focus with your shot with just using the range finder. Uh, this basically makes it a lot more usable for, for actual film production. I used all of them, uh, but I found that the one I liked the most was the Anamorphot 50 with a 2 times squeeze. Uh, I attached it to various 50mm prime lenses and it performed the same with all of them. Uh, it definitely gives you the real anamorphic look because it actually is an anamorphic lens uh, element that it squeezes horizontally 2 times. Now the lens flares uh, look nice on this. Uh, the bokeh is not as perfect, but it has still that anamorphic feel. Uh, it also creates a nice but subtle uh, distortion. Uh, in my tests, this really only works though with the 50mm lenses, as any other focal lengths you get uh, a lot of artifacts. Uh, even with my best 50mm prime lenses, the image is pretty soft, so you need to step down on your taking lens, I would say at least three steps. Uh, so it's definitely not a low light uh, lens. Although I did get to shoot these here, for example, shots using this lens adapter and the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K camera, which uh, is definitely not a low light camera. The prices of this adapter start at $500, but if you get the same kit that I used, it will cost you around $1,500. Uh, it might seem expensive, but trust me, when it comes to anamorphic lenses, this is still nothing. Uh, another similar option is the Iskarama Pre-36 anamorphic lens adapter. Uh, these are actually hard to get, but if you do find them, they usually cost you around $2,000 to $3,000. And they're not my favorite though, uh, but I know many other people do use these uh, adapters. 
Next up in price, we have uh, actual anamorphic lenses that don't require another spherical lens to, to be adapted to the camera. Now, the cheapest anamorphic lenses I found are also from SLR Magic. Uh, and these are the 2X anamorphic cine lenses. And these cost around $3,000 per lens uh, with the Micro Four Thirds mount. Or you can get the whole kit of three of these lenses that I have uh, for $8,500 uh, $8, or $8,500. These come in uh, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and 70 millimeter. Uh, SLR Magic uh, does also offer similar anamorphic lenses, but with a PL mount that costs around $6,000. I, I have not tried those. Uh, I have shot various projects on the Micro Four Third mount version lenses uh, with my Panasonic GH4 and GH5. And these are fun lenses to use, uh, but th they are far from, from perfect. Uh, they tend to be a bit soft unless you stop them down at least, I would say, two f-stops. Uh, also, they do, do introduce some uh, chromatic aberrations. Uh, then again, all anamorphic lenses have some artifacts, so I kind of accept this as, as part of just you know, shooting that anamorphic look. Um, these lenses flare nicely though, uh, and the bokeh is decent, but since they're, you know, they're for smaller micro four thirds image sensor, you can't really expect to get that really narrow uh, depth of field that uh, the classic anamorphic lenses are so known for. Next, let's get into vintage anamorphic lenses. Uh, these are all PL mount lenses. They are all lenses built for 35 millimeter film cameras that are now uh, finding new use in the in the digital film world. Uh, these lenses are usually just rented by cinematographers for a particular project since they they are expensive, and, and uh, they need to be serviced to keep them in good working order. Uh, there's actually quite a few of these, but I'll talk about my two picks. So first one is Koa Cine Promenar anamorphic lenses. Uh, these are my favorite from the vintage anamorphics. These these are actually fairly sharp given that they're vintage lenses from 1970s. Uh, they have beautiful colors and, and that 3D feeling. Uh, plus, I, I actually like their flares. The, the bokeh is also nice, uh, but a bit distorted. Um, now, finding these on sale is actually very rare. If you do find them, get them, as you will not have a problem selling them again. Now, how much you can expect to pay for these lenses is really anyone's guess. It all depends on their condition and if they've been serviced and so on. Uh, now, I heard some filmmakers get a set of these lenses for as cheap as $30,000, but usually you will see a price of uh, above $100,000 for a set of four or, or $30,000 for one lens. Next ones uh, are the Lomo Anamorphics. There are also great vintage lenses. They're Russian made, so far from perfect, but uh, they're built like a tank. Uh, they are very similar to the Kowas, although usually not as sharp around the edges, uh, but they do have such a unique look that in a way their imperfections is what people like about them. Uh, because they have been used actually on a lot of big projects from films to music videos and so on. Uh, they're also a, a lot more affordable. Uh, I've seen some listed for sale for as low as $9,000 per lens. Uh, they are easy to find for rentals though and cost just around $2,000 per week or $700 per day for a whole set of four lenses. Uh, there's actually a great online rental place called ShareGrid where you can find these lenses uh, and also pretty much any other uh, camera gear. Now let's get into the more modern anamorphic lenses that are used commonly on various feature films, commercials, music videos, uh, and, and even those ultra big budget productions. Uh, first is actually the, a new company that I just heard about and had a chance to play with their lenses uh, last year at NAB 2017. It's the Atlas Lensco uh, with their Orion series of anamorphic lenses. Uh, these are beautiful modern two times anamorphic lenses. Uh, they're very clean, sharp, and, and just all around great. The bokeh is perfectly shaped. Uh, they flare nicely uh, and they don't distort that much. Now, that can actually be a bad thing for some DPs. I, I know many people who shoot anamorphics uh, because of that you know, 3D distortion. Now, for me, I can actually live without that. So I'm actually waiting till Atlas Lensco uh, releases their complete set of three lenses for sale. Uh, so I can use them on my next film. I know they're already accepting pre-orders for these. Uh, they're actually very affordable in terms of modern, you know, brand new anamorphic lenses. And, and they're actually very fast too at T2. Uh, they cost $8,000 per lens or $24,000 for a set of three lenses. Uh, and they will have a 40mm, 65mm and 100mm lens. Another cool thing about these lenses is that they, they are not just airy PL mount, but they come with an interchangeable mount. So you can also swap the, to Canon EF mount. So in a way, these lenses can be used on pretty much any camera these days. Uh, so it's very exciting. And next up, we've got the big boys of anamorphic lenses. Now, these are lenses that cost 
$30,000 an app per lens. Many of these can actually cost well over $100,000. Uh, first up are the Zeiss Master Anamorphic Lenses. Uh, these are great, sharp, clean and, and all that. Uh, but to me, they, they are almost too perfect. Uh, like I said before, when shooting anamorphic, you kind of want those imperfections that make your image look more organic or, or filmic. And the Ari Zeiss Master Anamorphics uh, are anamorphics, but to me, they don't feel anamorphic. And uh, they also don't have that iconic anamorphic lens flare. Now, these will cost you also between $35,000 and $50,000 per lens. Um, now, next up are the Cook anamorphic lenses, uh, uh, which are also perfect, yet they still manage to give that organic anamorphic look. Uh, I also like their flares. Uh, they have that perfect oval bokeh. Uh, I love everything about these lenses, but their price. <laughs> uh, they cost around $30,000 per lens, so not as much as the Aries, but I still think it might be best to rent these. Uh, last, let's mention uh, the Panavision lenses. Th these are great, but they're not really lenses that you can buy. The Panavision is basically a whole system uh, that is only for rent if you're going to shoot a film on Panavision. Uh, they're great though, and they are uh, what created a lot of that sort of iconic anamorphic look uh, that many films throughout the years of cinema have been shot on. So uh, they're not perfect, but they are beautiful in that anamorphic sort of way. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this tour of shooting anamorphic in today's world and if you did make sure to leave me a comment below uh, Also subscribe to me and click that thumbs up button. So everyone else knows you like this video uh, My name again is Tom Antos, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye <laughs>